Welcome back to Chapter 7 on Linear Combinations, Spans, and Independence. In this video, we're going to start Section 7.2 on spans. Uh, the goal of this section is to define the span of a collection of vectors in Rn algebraically and to understand what this definition also means geometrically in three-dimensional space. In this video, we're going to do uh, Section 7.2.1, the algebraic view of spans, and we're going to start with the definition. So the span of a collection of vectors v1, v2, up to vk in Rn is written as span v1, v2, up to vk, and it is the set of all possible linear combinations of these vectors. So the set of all possible linear combinations of v1 through vk is called the span of these vectors. So symbolically, we can write this as the set of all vectors w in Rn, such that w can be written as a linear combination. So a1, v1, plus a2, v2, all the way up to a k, v k. And we know with these linear combinations that we are taking our scalars, a1, a2, and up to a k, as real numbers. So just a little something about this notation, if you've never seen this before. This, the curly brackets, mean the set of, and this vertical bar is the symbol for such that. So the symbol of the set of all W and Rn such that W can be written as a linear combination. The second part of the definition, if S is the span, then the vectors v1 through vk are called generating vectors. Or just generators. For the span, for s, and the vectors are said to generate s. So there's our vocabulary. Now let's go ahead and look at example 7.2.1. We're going to apply the definition. And so here we are given a set of vectors, v1, v2, v3, and w, which is 1, uh, 4, 6, minus 4. And we're asked to determine if w is in the span of these vectors. So let's go back and look. The span is all possible linear combinations of these vectors, all of them. And so that means that W is in the span of V1, V2, V3, if and only if W is a linear combination. of these vectors. Well, what does that mean? We have to remember from our previous video that W is a linear combination if and only if there are constants, coefficients, a1, a2, and a3, scalars in R, such that W is equal to a1 v1 plus a2 v2 plus a3 v3. Well, if these vectors v1, v2, v3, and w look familiar, it's because we've seen them. In example 7.1.2 in the previous section, we saw these exact vectors and we found that there was infinitely many ways, and in particular we chose w as v1 minus v2 plus v3, right? Other combinations were possible. But in particular, w is a linear combination of these vectors, and that means that Right, so since W is a linear combination of the generators V1, V2, V3 are called the generators 
W is in the span. So as far as applying the definition, that's all there is to it. It doesn't tell us much about what spans are good for, doesn't tell us much about what they look like, but we are going to examine that in a later section. So let's go and look at the next example, which is 7.2.2. And you might recognize this as well. These are vectors that we've already seen. We're asked the same question. We saw these in a previous subsection. We're asked if W is in the span of V1. Right, so exactly the same way, W is in the span of V1 if and only if W is a linear combination. And we saw that that means if and only if W is a scalar multiple, a single, a linear combination of a single vector is a scalar multiple of that vector which means if and only if w is equal to a times v1 in that exact same example from the previous subsection right so in this example we saw this was not possible and you might see it again just by looking at it we saw that w was not a scalar multiple of v1. Therefore, w is not in the span of this single vector v1. So all of this really feels like nothing new. It is just a rephrasing so far. I mean, we'll see why we bother this rephrasing. But asking, this is takeaway three, asking is w in the span of vectors v1, v2, up to vk. Asking that question is exactly the same thing as asking, can w be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors? which is something that we've explored. So really, as far as we have so far, spans are simply rephrasings. They're collections of linear combinations. So let's do one last example, and then we will explore in the next video what is really going on when we collect all our linear combinations together in one group. So example 7.2.3 show that the zero vector is in every span in Rn. So how do we do that? Well, let's first of all give ourselves a set of generators. So let V1, V2, and Vk in Rn be arbitrary. Notice that the zero vector in Rn can be expressed as zero times V1 plus zero times V2 Plus, let me tell you, I thought long and hard before coming up with this linear combination. Zero times all the vectors, obviously add those up together and you will get zero. Well, what does that mean? Zero may be expressed as a linear combination of any set of vectors v1, v2, all the way up to vk. Well, spans contain absolutely all linear combinations and therefore zero is in the span of v1, v2 to vk. For any set of generators. Therefore, the zero vector is in every span. 
So in the next video, we'll dig a little deeper into spans by looking at what they represent geometrically.